The reason we moved away from Drake was that we felt that we wrapped that story up on Uncharted 4. And that's really the motivation to find a new cast of characters that could actually carry on the Uncharted legacy. Uncharted is more than just Nathan Drake. And I think maybe makes people think a little differently about the Uncharted series as far as what they think of when they think of Uncharted. We started trying to keep it short. We started trying to keep it contained. But like all Naughty Dog games, you know, it's story driven and we need the time to tell the story accurately. We needed to go into the past, dig a little deeper than, you know, the surface. And it just blew up. We started expanding to get character arcs developed. And before we knew it, it's a full game. We're treating it as seriously as an Uncharted game. The game could stand on its own as an entry in the series. It's going to be the sum of Uncharted's in terms of gameplay experience with some of our beloved characters, some of the most fan-favored characters. Well, there were many ideas on the table, like Sullivan and Sam's story, but they all were very closely related to U4, so we wanted something that was fresh, something that was new, and Chloe being a fan favorite, we thought we would explore her story. Then we thought about, okay, well, who would be a good pairing with Chloe Fraser? We were like, well, what if Chloe Fraser wanted to explore her past, go back to India, to her roots, and what if she needed someone like Nadine Ross as a, a partner? We find these symbols. We find the task. And then that was the kind of jumping off point of these two interesting characters together. We can put them wherever we want. We know that there's going to be fun stuff happening. And uh, Chloe is more improvisational. Nadine is more logical. We know that there's going to be great conflict if we throw those two together. That's supposed to happen? I don't know. Chloe Fraser has interest in the Tusk of Ganesh, which is a treasure that's in India that is kind of close to her. Her father was an archeologist. He had tried tracking down this tusk before in the past. So for Chloe, there's a personal attachment to the tusk. For Nadine Ross, she is on the verge of bankruptcy. She's lost shoreline and she desperately wants to regain control. That's where the characters start. Because of Nadine's military background, particularly with our villain, Sav, Chloe's brought her in to kind of help her out. He's just another warmonger with no war to fight. No, you don't know him like I do. He changes location and routines by the hour. We'd be foolish to take unnecessary risks. We? Let's get one thing straight. This is my gig. You want your share? We play by my rules. But Sav, as a villain, he is motivated by a code. He believes that he owns rights to this land and he's fought a war that has kind of gone on for centuries. So recently he has started rekindling this war to profit. Giving the player more options, I think, would be the highest level encompassing way to describe what we're trying to elevate even from Uncharted 4. We have all those things at our disposal again, rope climbing, driving, we have the winch, stealth options. We have lock picking now, so we have crates of things that you can find certain weapons or treasures in. We just present you with a lot of stuff that the player can then decide what to do. And then, of course, having an allied character with you during all of those things and making sure that they're, they can react and be as lifelike as possible as a human would. We're taking advantage of the buddy system by integrating more of the narrative. For example, if our characters in the story aren't uh, communicating well or they're upset or they're aggravated, it will reflect in the gameplay. So if I've just come out of a heated argument with Nadine Ross, in the gameplay you will feel that tension, you will feel that aggravation. The challenge for us was this player-driven space. It's not open world, but it's vast and you have player choice that you can go and experience it differently. There's things to find a true sense of exploration, but the goal being that you're just exploring and freely doing things and then the story is still progressing in the way that they would expect from an Uncharted. It's something we've never really done to the level that we're doing now in Uncharted. The trident, the bow and arrow, the axe, the 
great battle in which Ganesh lost his tusk, we find these symbols. We find the tusk. That's supposed to happen? Dunno. Welcome to downtown Halabadu. Last known resting place of the Tusk of Ganesh. I don't like it. You don't like anything. Oh, thank you. I'm slipping. You know that treasure hunting is not at the risk of us, right? Neither is being a mercenary. You too. Partners. And hello, gorgeous. What a pleasant surprise. You want the Tusk? You need my help. A thief? Collector of antiquities. A parasite who exploits our struggle in order to fatten her pockets. So that's a no? Felt like a no. I must admit, you are quite the schemer. You were going to sell me out, weren't you? Or history with the Saab made you the obvious choice. You lie to my Cards on the table. I need your help. And if you want the tusk, you need mine. This Olympic can't change your spots. You know nothing about me. Now the casualty of war. Don't! PlayStation.